What's going on guys? Mike here back in the aquarium lab with a brand new fish profile. Today we're talking all about Hyphesobrycon erythra stigma, but you may know it as the bleeding heart tetra. If you've been following along, you know that I have a school of eight of them in my 90 gallon and I'm really enjoying them so far. Great community fish, easy to care for, and they have a decent size potential making them great for medium to large sized aquariums. Let's get a little bit more specific though. Originating from South America, specifically Peru, the Bleeding Heart Tetra can be found in the upper regions of the Amazon River Basin, where this fish experiences slow moving current and a variety of slightly acidic water conditions. As with most all other tetras, about 99% of the freshwater fish that we have access to have been bred in captivity for so long that they can endure a fairly wide range of water parameters in the home aquarium, making them a great addition to pretty much anybody's tank. And with that being said, it is ideal to keep bleeding hearts within the following ranges of the different water parameters. Temperature between 72 and 82 degrees Fahrenheit, pH anywhere from 6.5 to 7.5, and a total water hardness that's below 8, although you won't have problems with these fish even if you're slightly outside of those ranges. Bleeding hearts get their name from the bright red, almost heart-shaped pattern that can be found just ahead of the ventral fins near both sides of the front center of its body. Bleeding hearts also have a really cool dorsal fin that's slumped over most of the time, but has some really nice black accents in it. A red stripe seems to separate the top and bottom half of this fish, and overall the bleeding hearts have a unique shape to them. It's almost like they're little hunchbacks. When you first get these fish, they may not display the best coloration as a result of being placed in a new environment. After a few days, maybe even a week, they will color back up and display some really nice pink and dark red accents. Feeding these guys is also super easy like most all tetras. Nothing special needs to be prepared. I like to feed my bleeding hearts a combo of standard flake food, freeze dried blood worms, and tube effects worms. Mixing up your fish's diet is super important for overall health, behavior, and of course color. I'll link all my favorite foods that I recommend down in the description. These fish are best kept in at least a 20 gallon tank, but I recommend you upgrade to at least a 40 gallon so you can keep more than a few of these guys. A shoaling or schooling fish, bleeding hearts are gonna appreciate being in groups of at least six. You can get three of them and put them into a 10 gallon, but just think about how much cooler it would be to have 15 of them in a 40. Keep in mind that these guys are going to appreciate a planted tank, the more plants the better. These guys will tend to keep to the middle and bottom regions of the tank and offer a pretty good balance for somebody that already has a lot of top level swimmers. These fish won't stay small for long. Mine are fairly large and are getting close to fully grown, which is gonna be about two and a half to three inches tops. Like most other fish, they do get slightly bigger in the wild, topping out at about three and a half inches. With an average lifespan of about three to five years, they're gonna be perfect for a long-term fish keeper. Male and female bleeding hearts look very similar, like what is seen in many other species of common tetras. Females will be more full-bodied, while males will have a longer, more slender dorsal fin that will extend to the base of its caudal fin. Breeding these fish in captivity is extremely difficult, and chances are it will not happen naturally in your aquarium, but you never know. Bleeding hearts are great community fish like I mentioned at the start, they're not going to give anybody a hard time, and based on their size, they could be a good match for tanks with other semi-aggressive fish, it just depends. In my 90 gallon community tank here, they're doing great living with dwarf rainbows, scissor tail rasboras, and other small tetras. So overall, bleeding hearts are a perfect fish for a beginner that's got themselves, say, a 20 gallon tank or bigger. You can't go wrong with these fish, they're a pretty unique member of the Tetra family, and they're sure to impress anybody that sees your tank. I want to know if you guys have bleeding heart Tetras, and if so, what do you like most about them? Let me and other fish keepers know in the comments below. That's going to do it for today's fish profile guys, I hope you enjoyed it, maybe you learned something new. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video if you're into bleeding heart Tetras. Thanks so much for watching, we'll see you next time.